Good day to you, Guyana, and welcome to Facing the Nation. I am Malaika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us for another informative week. This week, of course, I take a break from um, some of the ministers and the government officials and advisors and so on that I would have been intervie interviewing over the past week. And I'm focusing on youth this week, one youth in particular. Um, some will describe him as a very controversial youth. So we'll talk about some of that controversy surrounding him today, and of course, some of what he expects going forward and some of what uh, he will be doing not only for the young people of our nation but for uh, the party that's still alive and well every week I like to remind you that the People's National Congress reform is still alive and well it may have in in, in some the sentiments of some it may have gotten a bit lost uh, of course because remember we had a partnership which is a partnership for national unity and then now there's a coalition a coalition government and all of that but the People's National Congress reform is still alive and well and I'd also like to remind you that uh, the fact is, it is the backbone of a partnership for national unity. So today we're going to be talking to one of the main youth members of uh, that uh, party and of course of that partnership, Mr. James Anthony Bond, no stranger to either of you. He is, some of us call him a political activist. Um, he is also an attorney at law and one of the youth leaders in our party and in our partnership. Welcome to you, James. Thanks for having me, Malika. All right, great to have you. Viewers also coming up a little later on in the program, as you know, uh, for our Muslim brothers and sisters, we are currently in the month of Ramadan. Now, at the weekend, last weekend, that is, that's on Saturday, the Minister of Social Protection, Ms. Valda Lawrence, Mrs. Valda Lawrence, and uh, the head of the political division, Mr. Uh, Wilfred Mac Wilfred, they visited the Anna Katharina Islamic Center last Saturday, and they were part of those celebrations. I think that marked the third day of the celebrations for the month of Ramadan. So you'll be seeing a bit of the clip, and they're in involvement in those activities last week. But for now, let's get to James Bond. James, lots on the schedule to talk to you yes, about today. Yes, yes. yes. You see, he, he said yes, because he has been busy. And viewers, he knows that he's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first off, before we even talk about controversy and everything else surrounding James Bond, you have taken on a big task. I would see it as a big task. You're calling it the PNCR Rebuild, Rebrand project, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, rebrand 2020, and rebuild. <laughs> rebrand and rebuild, 2020 vision. What is that project, first of all? Um, it was conceptualized since 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. just after the 2011 elections. Um, the first elections I've been, I would have participated actively in, and I realized that one trump card, the People's Progressive Party Civic had, mm -hmm. was PNC, Burnham, uh, 28 years, banning of law rig elections all the negative um, aspects of campaigning, they labeled them and uh, blacklisted, so to speak, uh, the PNC. That mm -hmm. was their main weapon, their, their trump card, mm -hmm. their number one arrow in their quiver. So I wrote a, a policy paper, and I had presented to the Central Executive of the Party mm -hmm. um, since 2012, I think, 2012, 2011, saying, you know what, we need to strategize to defeat this, um, this weapon of the People's Progressive Party Civic. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I just pulled it out and said, you know, sometime I'm going to go forward with it. Because in 2015, they did the same thing. Um, pulled out the race card, pulled out the negative branding, um, negative publicity, everything that was just... They, was, they started labeling it PNC AFC Coalition. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to see strategy in, in politics, and you have to find ways and means of, of countering that. And um, simply PNC or rebrand rebuild. One aspect is to conquer the negative branding of the People's Progressive Party Civil. If I may interject here, um, you're saying this, that you realize that that was sort of the, to use your term, the PPP Trump card, link us with the Barnum era and, and, and bring in the racism and all of that. Now, they know that this PNCR rebrand rebuild uh, 20, 2020 vision project, they know that you are using that in a sense to kill their strategy. No, this is made, this has been made public. Are you concerned that they will come with something else? Because the fact is no one wants to be in opposition. They're currently in opposition and we can expect them to come guns blazing, but are you expecting now for them to come with a strategy that would probably kill what it is that you're trying to do? Actually, the, you have to understand, if you switch, if you take out PNCR mm -hmm. and the focus on PNCR from any elections, mm -hmm. you fo you, your, your focus will have to be issues. So they have to come now to counter, counter a strategy to, to beat us on issues. Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to, we want the battle to be on issues. 
We don't want the battle to be about PNCR and rigged elections and banning of flour and a militarization. We want the, uh, the elections in 2020 to be about issues. So I, I'm glad if they, they see what we're doing and try to switch up their game plan. And another aspect of PNCR rebrand rebuild is to ensure that we attract new blood. Mm -hmm. We attract fresh um, ideas, young people. And um, since we started our registration, vibe, registration drive, mm -hmm. we've attracted doctors, lawyers, teachers, um, nurses, you name it, from all walks of life. There are now proud members or potential members of the People's, Progress, People's National Congress reform. So now you have a party now that is, is more vibrant, more enthused, mm -hmm. and it's all we're capitalizing on the goodwill in the part, uh, the goodwill that our, our, our party has now been given, a, not a lease of life, not in opposition, not as a main opposition component in a partnership of national unity, but also as part of the government, of a coalition government of the day. So it's a holistic approach to, to politics and uh, politicking and how you present your party um, in a, I want to say, the dynamics of a coalition. Because I believe every single party, inclusive of the WPA, the, the AFC, the NFA, the mm -hmm. National Front Alliance, the JFAP, uh, the GAP, all should be doing political work. On their own. On their own, um, strengthening their base, trying to uh, target the base of the PPP, the PPP going to the PP strongholds and impacting on, on their own base with political work and social work. I believe every single party has to carry the load. Not that we're in government. Mm -hmm. Yes, the ministers, has, they have to do their jobs, but you can't expect them to do both their, their, their government jobs and political jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think those that are not serving in, in government, I think they, they owe it to their own individual parties to so, do political work. And um, for my own part, that's what I'm doing with the PNCR. You have so far had a chance to work very closely with um, these new members from their standpoint. What did they say to James Bond? What are they expecting now from the People's National Congress reform? This is uh, with the exception of its involvement in the partnership and the government. Excellent question. I believe uh, one thing that young people, uh, they want is to be a part of. They're not looking for the party care to get them discounts at um, a Best Buy mm. or National Hardware. Uh, they're not expecting a party care to get them a discount at the University of Guyana or to get them a bus ride. They want a sense of belonging. Um, what we've done is, is the, that comes with branding. Mm. If you present uh, people a brand that is attractive, that you know what? Representation. Your interest will be represented at the highest forums of the land participation in nation building, that you get a, a chance to contribute your talents and energies to something that is bigger than yourself. That is what I'm selling to, to young people. And they're not looking for uh, any grants, scholarships, jobs. They're not looking for that. They just need to see, you know what, that my interests are being represented, that I'm being allowed to participate, and, um, and have a sense of belonging. That what I'm buying into is actually part and parcel of myself. I want to say this um, person with the People's National Congress reform, who sometimes feel threatened by something like this, is this here. You have to understand as an organism, you have to grow. Mm -hmm. And in a few years' time, the, the, the elders of the party will not be there. Why wait until they're gone to start attracting people? Um, I must co commend the vision of Winston Murray, uh, who saw me and said, you know something, come be a part of it. You're always talking about what we should be doing as opposition. Come and be part of it. And uh, you know, a lot of people, whilst we were on opposition, they ha always had comments. And um, I tell them now, come be a part of it. And um, let's see how you could transform and make the, the, not only Ghana better, a, a better country, but you're actually uh, making the political process what you want it to be in the future. Okay. All right. Let me go into, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Let me go into some criticisms because you have talked a lot about this uh, rebuild, rebrand project, yeah. 2020 vision, and what you're expecting and what the young people are expecting from yourself and from the party, the People's National Congress Reform. Let me put this statement out there. James Bond is looking for a project to fill his time because, of course, he has been left out, excluded, whatever word you want to use, from the current government, APNU, AFC government. How do you respond to somebody who would say that? That James was looking for a project. I'm not looking yeah. for a project. This was in 2012. Mm. Um, the truth is, I have seen the need for the project now mm -hmm. because... Um, 
I think you were going to ask him, James, I want to be leader of the party. No, I'm coming to that. You, you see now he's preempting me. I'm, I'm coming to that. All right, good. That's good. Yeah, um, I'm not looking for projects. I, I've started something called the Hope Projects. Um, persons know that I'm very, um, I'm also a humanitarian social activist. Okay. I formed Respect the Game, uh, a sport charity company, which we host sport events uh, for um, young people, um, teams mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, the sports giving back to charities. So I'm always looking to do something for, 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 for my country, for my community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started Tiger Bay Project. Um, I'm also going to, I just all started making contact to do a library in Region 7. So I'm all, I'm going to donate today a computer to the residents of Kildonan. Because when I went there, a um, few people have email addresses, Facebook accounts, few people have access to computers. So I'm going to give them a computer and pay someone to um, tutor all the young people in, in Kildonan. Uh, to be computer literate. So I'm not looking for projects. Um, mm -hmm. The PNCR, I've come to love the party. And um, I can't be in a house and not contribute. Mm -hmm. That's not how my father taught me. He says if you're anywhere, you have to contribute. You have to make a contribution. You have to make a valuable contribution. And persons in the party know that. You could ask any single person in the PNCR about James Bond. They will tell you one. He's willing. He's a giver. You know, and um, I don't need a project to... to waste my time or do something other than that. I would have done this um, in any event. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I think now is the right opportunity, since I realize that a lot of, a lot of our ministers belong to the PNCR. They're, 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 they're very busy. Mm -hmm. They have to run this country. They have to succeed at that. And I believe you have to help them succeed. One of the things as a, as a team player, mm -hmm. um, you have, it's not always you have to be the one shooting the ball and mm -hmm. scoring the goal, but you could assist you could contribute and this is my way of ensuring that the whilst they're working hard to, to whilst they're working hard with the government mm -hmm. that someone is ensuring that the party uh, is growing that the party has uh, things that is be positive being done in communities um, irrespective of whether it's a PNC community or a PAP community or the AFC community that our presence as a political party is still there because we are a national party Mm -hmm. And um, I think that national presence, we must always be there. I mean, the public's eye is the PNCR doing something for Guyana and Guyanese. All right. Um, this question I'm going to ask, the question, of course, uh, you preempted me. Uh -huh. And I'm not necessarily talking about at the next Congress for the PNC, which I think is, uh, is due next year. Yeah. But maybe after that, maybe two years after that. You already said that James Bond is not looking for projects. Is James Bond looking for votes? No. Um, this is this it'd be ridiculous of me. I want to make this very this point very clear. I'm no Vincent Alexander. I'm no Winston Murray. Mm -hmm. I'm no Aubrey Norton. I'm no Sharma Solomon. I'm no Raphael Trotman. Any person would have challenged for leadership in the past. I'm not them. Mm -hmm. I because of one one single 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 thing. I do not see a vacuum in leadership. I do not see a lack of leadership. If there were a lack of leadership, mm -hmm. if there were incompetent leadership, I would be running. I'll be challenging if the opportunity presents itself. When I ran in 2010, there was a vacuum in leadership. They were saying, you know, something, uh, Mr. The IPL, immediately past leader, Robert Corbett, he was stepping down. So they were looking for a leader. Mm -hmm. So I, st I stepped up or based on a nomination. No, I would never run, again, run against David Granger or Basil Williams. I would never. If someone says, you know, something, um, James, maybe you should opt for vi a vice chairmanship position, I may consider it. But I do not see a vacuum in leadership in the PNCR. So I have no reason to challenge for leadership of the party. I'm comfortable with my leaders. I trust my leaders. All right. Okay. Viewers, if you're now joining us, I'm chatting with James Bond, attorney at law and, of course, farmer, former member of parliament uh, for a partnership for national unity. James and I are talking about uh, basically the rebrand, rebuild PNCR 2020 vision project, among other things. He has several other projects that uh, he's working on, of course, as you heard from him. Eventually, I would like to talk to James about the fact that there seems to have been an absence in terms of at a very high level uh, of government. I'm going to talk to him about the fact that he has not uh, been involved at that level where many of us um, expected to see him. Of course, also coming up later in the program is the clip that I told you about uh, regarding our minister and the head of the political division visiting um, one of the Islamic centers uh, on the third day for the month of Ramadan, which would have been last week, Saturday. But as I continue with uh, my conversation uh, with James, 
you did talk about a lot of projects, but one of the other one, the other projects that jumped out of not only myself, but Guyanese, especially people living in Georgetown, is the Tiger Bay project. Now, what motivated that? Yeah, well, I go to Tiger Bay, men to the youngsters, tell mm -hmm. them, you know what, a life of crime isn't it? I know you don't have jobs, you probably don't have an education, uh, but turn it to crime and violence isn't it? And you're a stigmatized community, you're, you're, you're termed ghetto, mm -hmm. ghetto youth, and um, there's certain things that you need not portray. Mm -hmm. And having conversations with them every Saturday around 10, uh, you know, they started to tell me about their past experiences with other leaders. A lot of people went into Tiger Bay, gave mm -hmm. handouts, and um, residents told them, you know, these are my problems, these are my issues. I said, so what was done? They said, nothing. And uh, I said, no, no. I said, look, I'll make your promise. I said, I will do something, and you judge me based on that. And so I've been doing stuff um, in terms of the basic things that they asked for. And the drainage was one. And the, that street, Queen Street, was always flooded. Tiger Bay was always flooded. Every rain. Now, all that rain that fell, Tiger Bay was never flooded. Never flooded. Um, they cut new concrete drains, flush out the underground tunnels, so that's not flooded. Um, we did the, some cleaning in the area, and the next phase we're going at is doing the sanitation block. And yes, let me jump in here, and because you talked about flooding, which is a big issue for Georgetown. Have you had assistance from government in that, that particular project in terms of cleaning drains to ensure that there's no flooding and so on? No. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, I tend to have a great relationship with the private sector. An excellent relationship with the private sector. I want to say good morning to members, <laughs> of, good afternoon members of the private sector, uh, the businesses. Um, they've always supported my, 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 my endeavors, my vision. They've always done so. So I must say thanks to Jagmon Comes Construction Services, mm -hmm. NABI, uh, NABI uh, Engineering Construction Inc., sorry, mm -hmm. and um, some other companies that have come on board and um, said, you know what, we'll make this, we'll help you succeed in, 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 in making life better for the residents of Tiger Bay. And, um, so we're going to do a sanitation block for them. We're going to do over the community center, give them back the West End Gym, um, Fitness Express. They're going to source the equipment for us. Um, he sent me an invoice mm. for six million dollars. It excess six million dollars for a. You can see almost state of the art. It would be the best boxing gym in Guyana, and um, so we have now the response for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, at the end game now we're doing. We've already started. We always we have a draft proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, which we're going to send to a few uh, agencies, including the, the British High Commission, mm -hmm. who is excited about the project in terms of the sanitation aspect of it. And um, we're looking, we, we've, I've sent in the list of residents to the Ministry of Housing. Mm -hmm. I hope they give me back. Um, we sent that in a couple of weeks now, like last week or a week and a half yeah, ago. Yeah, I noticed you looking directly yes, to the camera yes, when you yes, said a couple of yes. weeks. Yes, I know, I know they're very busy, but we mm -hmm. sent in the names of all the residents there because we do a lot of fact checking. Mm -hmm. What we did the first day is that we did gave out questionnaires, we took information as to who had house lots, who didn't, who didn't have house lots. So we're doing a lot of ground work. Besides the actual infrastructure work, mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of fact finding. And uh, we submitted that list to the Ministry of Housing, yes. <laughs> and uh, we hope that we get a, a list as to where the presents were located, and uh, where they were placed, and if they, their lots were taken away from them. We expect mm -hmm. that information from them by latest Monday. Okay. Thank you very right. much. You're also <laughs> giving them a deadline. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole idea is that Habitat for Humanity has done something very special. They've oh, said, okay. you know what? We will provide the materials for them to build the homes if government gives us the plot of land. Or where they have land, where the persons have had land before, we will give them the materials. Okay. And all they have to do is provide the labor so they could build their own homes. And um, mm -hmm. that was a wonderful idea. I must um, thank Habitat for Humanity for that. Uh, Mr. Ming, Stanley Ming, he's also instrumental mm -hmm. in that aspect of it. Um, so we, we, we're moving a pace, I think, uh, Mr. Raul Small, the National Director for Habitat for Humanity, he also has an idea of what to do with Tiger Bay after the residents have relocated. Okay. And um, I, must, I must say that we've placed his idea as, part, as one of the components of Project Tiger Bay. Another component added on due to gain corporate sponsorship is uh, free eye care and glasses for all the children of Tiger Bay. Um, that's by Optic Vision Care. Um, they're going to do that for for the rest of the children of Tiger Bay. Free eye tests and free glasses if they, they so need. You did say that uh, the residents of Tiger Bay, and of course this is a fact, Guyanese know this, that many leaders would have gone into Tiger Bay and, and whatever projects they've started, if they've uh, even come close to starting projects, it, it would have failed and, and Tiger, Bay, Tiger Bay was just left. Two things on that. Do you have a cutoff point for the project, as in a timeline yes. for the project, or will it be 
an ongoing project for yourself and the groups and of course the private sector and all the other entities working in that community? Well, we gave the Tiger Bridge probably but, uh, between two to three years to actually oh. relocate all the, all the residents, ensure they have all the rooms and transform it into a tourist attraction. That was the idea of Mr. Ross Small. After we located them, mm -hmm. converted to a tourist attraction. Um, it's very simple. Um, awnings, um, uh, painting the walls. Uh, it, it, it was done in Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, and he sent me some pictures uh, online. And it was very, very, it's very cheap to do. And um, doing the roads in those nice brick, uh, those um, patterned bricks and um, umbrellas, it could be an outside, mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, carnival with, or, or mm -hmm. with pan, steel pan on, on the night where you're going to have an outdoor restaurant like in that area. Spot yes, too. It, it, yeah, there are a lot of potential. There's there's a lot of potential um, in, in these that could be um, done in, in um, Tiger Bay, so to speak, transforming these impoverished communities into tourist attractions. It's amazing. If, if persons are interested, I think um, there's a, there, there's a site that deals these with that, uh, in Buenos Aires, and it was done definitely in Argentina just recently okay all right you I know you you did say you did mention that you were getting so you've reached out to government in terms of the housing issues for support will you be reaching out to any other ministries and, and yes, any other course. assistant you may need for that yes of course I, I, it, it, <laughs> you, you, keep me, you, you keep me right on check yes I am uh, yes thank you very very much for that because uh, it was it, uh, it would be um, very, very, very bad of me not to mention the Honorable Minister of Social Protection, Ms. Valo Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she's agreed to partner with us um, because what we're going to do is to do some skills training in the area mm -hmm. uh, for the young women and young men. Yeah. And um, she said, you know something, James, when you get up and running, you have the ministry's uh, support in that regard. So um, there, were, there were two beautiful ideas that come. We have a, a gentleman from the U.S. Mm -hmm. He builds robots. Uh, he's into robotics. and um, the changing of lights, the signs, um, KFC, uh, Pizza Hut, all mm -hmm. those signs with the lights changing in terms of directions or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, for traffic lights, those are done by, uh, in terms of uh, kind of ro robotics. And he says, you know what, we could train these youngsters here and persons who need signs built could get their signs built right in Tiger Bay. So I said, that's a fantastic idea. So he's preparing an invoice as we speak. Um, so we could approach the ministry to source some material to train the, 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 the young men. At the end of the day, those guys in Tiger Bay, if you want your science done, if you want to do something uh, technical, need robots or computers, go right into Tiger Bay. That would be a fantastic vision to, to see into reality. All right. Before we have to take a break and show that clip uh, I promised the viewers, do you have plans? Maybe you said you already said you gave it maybe a two year or so to uh, get the residents out of there and transform the community, Tiger Bay community. Do you have plans to focus on, and this is a, a specific project for any other uh, what unfortunately we have to call it that but what we call in Guyana any other depressed community uh, yes uh, we had identified a village in Kanji I was speaking to Jeff on Stevens well as I was in Barbies a few Sundays ago mm -hmm. two Sundays ago and he says there's a community in, in Kanji mm -hmm. uh, very impoverished where we could do something I haven't visited this yet mm -hmm. um, since I, I I was telling um, another friend of mine that you know what so many people come with ideas to do here, there, um, but I say, you know, I'm, I'm very focused. I, I one of my phrases is singularity of purpose. Okay. You have to, you have to focus on one thing and, and succeed at it, uh, finish it, at least get it up off the ground so it could run by itself before you actually venture into another major, major project. So I'm not going to do anything else. Uh, this wide scale, um, this, this, uh, this, this demanding, because trust me, it's a lot to keep up and to mm -hmm. ensure that this person have, has that information, that person gets you that information. Uh, it's almost a daily, it's, it's almost a day, a day job, <laughs> you know, to do that. Because almost you find out for a week, every day I had to be in Tiger Bay, um, checking on the works that were done. Uh, persons who wanted to visit the area, um, other uh, NGOs wanted to see what's going on and wanted to contribute. And Caring for Others Inc., um, that's another charity who was partnered with us. And uh, I'm right now f doing up a, a means, a means list. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they, they call it, a means list. Some list uh, that they wanted from the uh, a needs list. Sorry, not <laughs> needs. <laughs> a needs list for residents of Tiger Bay. So I'm currently mm -hmm. working on that right now to submit to the charity. It's overseas based in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and um, they do some work in Guyana. So they said, just send me a needs list, 
and um, I, I should do that for them by next week, and they will be sending stuff for instance with Taika B. So already, um, relief is coming, and um, my next project may be, I was in Old Boystown yesterday, and mm -hmm. uh, with the director of sport, Mr. Christopher Jones, mm -hmm. uh, who's doing a fantastic job, and um, it, they have needs as well. And I want to say there's some um, government needs help, whether you like it or not, I believe in public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. I believe that government should work in hand with the private sector uh, in other social organizations to develop the country because government cannot do it alone. Um, persons may expect that, you know what, if, uh, there was a change that suddenly their change, their, their, their circumstances will miracles. change. Yes, mm -hmm. miracles. But it doesn't happen that way. You have to get people who are willing to work with the communities, willing to go out, and who are willing to do stuff with the private sector mm -hmm. and um, get stuff done. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Um, and again, before I go to the break, does this mean that we'll see James Bond's law practice being placed on the back burner? I mean, it has already been. I haven't worked a lot in three months. I closed down for three months to campaign. Okay. And um, I'm scaling down bit by bit um, in terms of practicing law. Because I said, you know what, someone made a comment on Facebook about mm -hmm. when I was mentioning about the PNCR. Mm -hmm. I, you, know, you know what I said to myself? I, be, I will be a politician from today. I will be a politician. So I'm putting law in the back seat in a, in a, in a, in a way. Um, I always have had a small practice in doing just major matters. So I'm a politician, okay. uh, not political activist. <laughs> Once you're going to say you're a politician, I just want to add my two cents here. Because of course, people who, who know us well know that uh, James is, is, is not only a youth leader and a, a former member of parliament and attorney at law, I consider him a brother. So I'm going to simply say this before I go to the break. If you're going to sit here today and you're going to admit that you're a politician, all I say is that, note, eventually you will have to run for higher office, sir. That's, and I'm going to leave, <laughs> leave it there for now. Viewers, this is Facing the Nation. I am now going to ask the operator to pull up that clip that I told you about earlier, where we had two senior officials visiting uh, the Anna Katharina Islamic Center. Of course, they visited last Saturday, and that would have marked the third day of the celebrations of the month of Ramadan. Take a look at that, and when we come back, we'll talk about the controversial side of James Bond. Stay tuned. <laughs> Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulim kareem. Respected elders, Maulana, Imam, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And to our non Muslim brothers and sisters, may Almighty Allah grant you His guidance and His peace. I am very humbled and happy to be here this evening to make iftar with the brothers and sisters on this third day of the great and glorious month of Ramadan. When I was leaving the office at 4 o'clock, His Excellency the President, who was still at his desk, and Mr. Joe Harmon, who was also at his desk, asked me, since they knew I was coming, to convey their salams to each and every one, and to convey their regrets to Brother Hakim and his executive for not being able to attend this function this evening. His Excellency the President asked me to convey to the brothers and sisters that he is here in spirit and he very much regrets not being able to be here in, in his physical presence. My dear brothers and sisters, I am a proud Muslim. Islam, to me, is my life. And before I accepted Islam, I was telling a brother just earlier this evening, if someone had told me that I would have been a Muslim, I would have said, you're mad. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants hidayat to whom he wills. And I am humbled to be part of this great and glorious deen of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the most 
pressing problems in our society is a lack of unity. And one of the most devastating aspects of that lack of unity is racial unity. But the Muslim community in Guyana has a very unique position in this matter. Today I was browsing through some stuff and I got two bits of information which I wish to share with you. The Muslim population of this world is approximately 1.6 billion people, just about one third of the world's population. There about between a quarter and a third of the world's population. 500 million of those Muslims live in South Asia, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, where one of the main ethnic groups in this country has its origins and foundations. On the other hand, Africa is known as the Muslim continent because as a continent it has the largest number of Muslims in the world. And Nigeria is the most populous African country with, uh, Muslim, but with, with Muslims. And so, and that is the origin and source of the second major race group, our Afro-Guyanese brothers and sisters. And so the Muslim community, which is made up of all races, has the unique position with people from those two groups and whose origins are those two continents, we have the greatest potential to demonstrate and to lead the way in this question of racial and national unity. We have to take this responsibility. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam, in his last sermon, he put this matter to rest. He said, there is no difference between an Arab and a non-Arab. There is no difference between a black and white. He was stating in categorical terms that there is no basis for racial prejudice and racial division within Islam. One of his closest companions who had the honor of calling the first Adhan from the top of his mosque in Medina was Bilal a black Muslim from Ethiopia. And another of his most, his closest companions was Salman al-Farsi, who came from Persia. And the Prophet Sallam demonstrated that race had no place in Islam. And he said the only thing that made a difference in the position of a person over another is piety. And in this great and glorious month, we strive for piety. We strive for taqwa. Brother Roshan gave the apt quotation from Quran, said, and fasting is prescribed for you as it is prescribed for those before you so that you may attain taqwa or piety. And so in this quest for piety for ourselves, we owe it to ourselves to remove from our hearts every iota of racial rancor which exists. And we owe to the society the demonstration of this. Because in another ayat of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more or less, he said the prophet is a witness over you. And you, the Muslims, he's speaking to the Muslims, you are a witness over mankind. We have the responsibility to set the example of racial and national unity in this country. And as we fast, and as we meditate, and as we strive for spiritual progress, let this be one of the things that we strive to remove from ourselves, from our jamaats, and from our society. It is always a good thing when persons can gather together to give thanks. There is nothing better than that. And it is even better when the persons who gather together gather not only in unity, but as a family. And being here this evening, it's my first occasion here, but I don't feel that way. I feel as though I'm a part of you. And I think it's that spirit of togetherness 
that spirit of joy and that spirit of sharing that emanates from each and every one of us. I am looking forward to working with you. And as you continue your month of prayer and fasting, I just want to ask you for two things. That as you pray, you will pray for wisdom, not only for the government, but for all of us. And wisdom is my key word. And I trust God that it will be my key word for the next five years. Because as a child growing up in Guyana, and as an adult, I always hear of all the potentials we have. But it seems as though we lack the wisdom to be able to take it to the higher level. And that's why I'm asking you to pray for wisdom. And the next thing I'm going to ask you to pray for may come as a surprise to you. But for me, it should be our armor plate. It should be what we wear and who we are. And that is humbleness. That all of us, all of us, irrespective of where we came from, and irrespective of what portfolio we hold, that we will walk in humility, that we will humble ourselves. And in order to do that, we will recognize that we have to humble our hearts. And so as you pray, and as you give of yourself to the Almighty God, I pray that he will hear our prayer and that he will grant us this wish because as you have heard, we have a lot of work to do. We have to mend the breaches and we have to be strong to stand in the gaps so that we can build a land where our young people take their cue not from the television, not from the greatest dancer, not from the greatest actors, but from their parents, the people who they see every single day. May God grant us the peace and the strength to continue, and may he bless you all. Thank you. Two presentations there by two of our senior members. Of course, that was last Saturday at the Anna Catherine Islamic Center, celebrating the month of Ramadan. And I should also mention that that clip was opportune and appropriate because we are in uh, we're currently in an era where we're talking about national unity, about social cohesion, about uh, bridging the, the gap between afro guyanese and indo guyanese and Amerindian guyanese So we're talking about racial harmony in essence, and of course you heard some of it from both speakers. So it indeed was an opportune time, and it's just a reminder that the new administration is all about national unity and peace and harmony and social cohesion. Of course, you know we have a ministry specifically for that. Those of you who are now joining us, you would have missed a great part of my discussion with James Anthony Bond. He is one of our youth leaders former member of parliament of course uh, that would have been the stint of a partnership for national unity in the national assembly in the tenth parliament of course that, that would have been before the formation of this new coalition government James Bond has taken on several projects and of course as I mentioned before he is also seen as one of the young most controversial <laughs> members of the People's National Congress reform and of a partnership for national unity now we're going to talk about some of the, the, those controversies, I should, said, should, should say, and I, I, knowing James, he will take the gloves off, <laughs> <laughs> take it, uh, respectfully take them off anyway. James, the fact is, over the years, let's say going as far back as maybe soon after you run for leadership of the People's National Congress reform, you have been described as a challenge, a rogue, too outspoken, 
Sometimes senior members have even gone as far as to, is to describe you as an indisciplined young member. Your response Don't forget to loose cannon. Loose cannon, yes. <laughs> You're also a loose cannon. Let's talk about your quote unquote behavior over the years. Defend your, your, your attitude towards certain things. Um, I think um, if anyone could point a single incident, right, disrespected anyone. Mm. Or, or chastise any member of my party, you'd find they could find not a single incident of that. Mm -hmm. I've never in any, any forum, private or otherwise, criticized, chastised, embarrassed, disrespected any member of the party, whether they're in leadership or not. What persons find very, very, um, I think in the terms of being outspoken and those kind of is that I address issues that are burning in a way that they might not have addressed it. Mm. But in every single instance that I did it, you found that my approach, though it was seen as unorthodox at the time, it was effective. Every single incident. And you have to think outside the box. I come from a place where I grew up being independent, of being an independent thinker. I'm not a yes man. I will never be a yes man. Mm -hmm. I will never be the leader's boy or a minister's boy or anybody's boy. I will never, I will never strive to be a favorite. I think um, everyone has their purpose, everyone has their role. I am a consummate, consummate mem team of the PNC and I've never, ever said anything disparaging about anyone the PNC are. If they could find a single incident. Here I did so, I turned in my membership card. Mm -hmm. So all the top of controversies, there is none. It's just that um, I, have, I say things in my own way, mm -hmm. and it rubs them a bit, <laughs> a bit harshly. A bit you don't harsh. like it. You know, they, they jump. Uh, one guy called me uh, a while. Oh, um, called me with some post on Facebook. It's always about Facebook. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. always about Facebook. And person don't understand the power of social media. I think they understand it now. Oh, they do. Uh, they, they, they understand it now. Coming around. A, a lot of persons have uh, come to the point of understanding it, especially in the last two months or so. You, you have to understand that social media, it's it operates in a different wave, a different spectrum from normal media. Uh, people are attuned to it with emotions mm -hmm. on fa on Facebook, Indeed. on Instagram, and WhatsApp, and Twitter. So you tap into those emotions and um, that is um i started my page about a, a couple of months uh, about a, a year or so ago and it's already gone past already because you have to be able to reach people where they where where they need to be reached you have to know your audience and on facebook i know my audience i know them better than anybody <laughs> you know so i know what would stir them up what will calm them down and um, uh, I've, I'm saying that if persons understand my approach, I says I'm unorthodox, but I'm effective. If they understand the approach, they would see no controversy. Um, even though I said even this rebrand, rebuild, persons are finding controversy with it. And this is something that was advocated since, I'm not the first person to do this, and I won't be the last. Even just recently, there was a circle in the Jarson district saying, you know what, Group, form new groups and expand old groups. Mm -hmm. I read that circle from the Joshua district. Mm -hmm. So persons are always, you know, I, I want to sometimes say, you know what, they, they just, uh, probably it's the name. <laughs> probably it's the name. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if you're somehow a threat, but we're, we're <laughs> no. going to come back to social sites in a bit. I used several words that people use to describe you. And even as my brother, I tell everybody James is my brother. I even say it to you, to your face, because of course you know I tell you these things. James, you were a rogue, yes. and you need to tone down at times. I would even say that to you. These words I used to describe you, people would say, those are the exact reasons you were left out of the higher level of this new administration, because everybody was uh -huh. expecting James to be a minister. I don't like the term junior minister viewers, so you have to forgive me, but people would have been expecting James to be a minister within yeah. a ministry. <laughs> That's the reason you've been left out. Your response? No, I, I don't. I don't think so. And um, if if you if you have someone, I always say this: a, a, a good leader. I would never want a bunch of yes men around me. Mm. I would always look for someone like a James Bond. 
because you know what I know if if I if something is wrong he'll say he'll not be he'll not be afraid he wouldn't study you know something oh my page I he's studying his paycheck or studying a promotion or studying his job um, he said as it is and um, he said in respect for mana and persons don't understand this I do not think I will never think that I would be left out I've never seen it as, as being left out mm -hmm. uh, and especially for reasons um, well, so let me be part myself in the back. Qualities of being <laughs> candid. <laughs> Wonderful. I like, I like that self you know, you know, of being candid. And what I said, my record speaks for itself. The leader, uh, His Excellency, Brigadier David, David Granger, has never questioned my loyalty and commitment to the party. Mm -hmm. And I will never give him cause to so do. I will never give anyone cause to so to question my loyalty and commitment to the PNCR. Never. I would never bring my party to disrepute. But you do agree that it's not always about the leader, His Excellency President David Granger. You do agree that it's not always about him. He's not the only senior in the party. You will get criticisms coming from all other sides. Do you, you do agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But he, I don't think that um, any other member hmm. of the party, in leadership or otherwise, um, will have a reason for seeing James Bond other than candid, um, uh, honest, um, hardworking, dedicated. You can because I, I don't like to boast about things I've done uh, in, in my political journey. Mm -hmm. You know, but I've done it all. You name it, I do it. And I do it without asking for anything. Um, uh, you, you could speak to members of the party. When they call on James Bond, what is the response? They set a task for me, what is the response? You know, um, go to, to groups and ask them, you see. So I think I have, since I've joined the party in 2010, mm -hmm. a catalog of, of work that speaks for itself, a body of work that speaks for itself. And I, I tell people, you, you call me a loose cannon. Have I ever shot at any member of the party? Hmm. Have I ever? You were shot at. I people was, would yeah, remember I was that. Shot at, yeah, but I've never, ever, you know, so I don't know what is this term, loose cannon and outspoken and... Um, rogue and all that kind of thing. I, I, I like to, to pride myself in being someone who sees the world differently from, from, from some people. I won't say majority. Mm. I just see the world differently. And again, I see is where persons are allowed to express um, their sentiments in a respectful manner, in a dignified manner, in a principled manner. Mm -hmm. And I always say, principle over politics. Exactly. That's one of my, exactly. my phrases, principle over politics. So you could keep your position, you could keep your post, you could keep your accolades, you could keep whatever you want to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, I earn a living, and I do, what I, 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 I do what I love doing, helping people, being in the communities, working with young people. I love doing that. So it, it, it gives me a sense of satisfaction doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I think... Um, Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Hmm. When it's my time, I don't think there's be a single soul in order to stop, stop it. it. You know, so I have no qualms, no hesitations in, in being where I am. I tell people, I'm in the best place of my life right now. I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more, more, more motivated. And, and the, the, the thing that critics don't know, Malika, it's for people like, like myself. When you criticize us, you only motivate ah, us. It's, it's better fuel. you leave us alone yeah. and Ignore let us go us. to sleep. <laughs> you know? But when you're going to issue challenges, mm -hmm. I, I, think, I don't know if it's a flaw or what, but critics just make me want to excel. You know, critics make me fine-tune uh, fine myself. Like, for example, they said, I, I, I got a call, but I said, um, you know, Mr. Sitar should be fired. Mm -hmm. I got a call. Um, I should, you you know, ruffled I, his feathers uh, yeah, there. I put a post on Facebook the other day. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, and I, I must say this here, and I am, I, I, and this is the part of the controversial part, James, what people don't know. Yeah, so we're waiting I for I ran into Mr. Sitar, <laughs> Sitar, and you know, he apologized for his statements. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, you know what, we're both men. If I offended you anyway, I apologize as well. You know, so that's a part people would not know. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think me and Mr. Sitar, I mean, you understand that what I said was in principle. Uh, probably not what he personal. said was not in principle, was personal. So he said his apologies. I said, look, if I offend you anyway, I'm sorry as well. So I'm not uh, arrogant. I'm, I'm not haughty. You know, but persons who know me, I said I have one friend. And if you hear anything from him, you know that is true. Anything else from uh, any other way, mm -hmm. 
but I have a lot of family. Uh, you're my sister, for example. <laughs> but I got a lot of family, but I got one friend. And, um, so I, I, I'm very happy in the place that I am. I'm very, very happy. And I, I, I just want to see the government I voted for succeed. Persons okay. don't understand that. You know, they, they and in order for them to succeed, this is a fact. I'm happy James said that because I want to push this bit in. In order for them to succeed, they have to be criticized even by their own. But of, of course, there's always a right way and a wrong way to do things. And what I don't like is uh, the fact that the minute you air your views, you put your views out there. I mean, you, I, sometimes I myself have to remind people, you take a step back. This is my government also. I am one of the persons who voted for them. So I get to say, you know, whatever it is, it, it's a, you, it goes into the realm of where people want to muzzle, especially the young people. And this is where uh, the issue about social site now would come in. James, do you believe that what is said on social site, what people post there, whether it be about themselves, whether it be about government, whatever organization they're part of, should that be taken as gospel without contacting persons? Of course not. That's a dangerous thing to do, to monitor someone's social page, mm -hmm. Facebook page, and then go running mm -hmm. up to the leader, running to some member. Hey, look, Malika just put up, oh, look what James, well, look, that is, that is so childish. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing it, stop it. And I know people do it, mm -hmm. and I hope they hear. That is so childish, so immature. Mm -hmm. The first thing, if someone, I would not, and that's where probably I'm different from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think there are critics out there who will criticize the government in public. Mm -hmm. But I know every person I have, everything I have had an issue with, I send emails. Mm -hmm. I criticize in, email, in an inbox. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes, um, you name it, I'm, it's excellent, you could attest to this. Mm -hmm. I send my criticisms in the email because I don't send it to any and everybody. Mm -hmm. Because people send sometimes misconstrued. So a lot of people can't take criticisms. Gotcha. A lot of people cannot take uh, advice. Um, they probably think their way is the best way and what they're saying is gospel. But trust me, they're always greater lesser persons than yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it is our duty not only to criticize in public, because I don't believe in criticizing to embarrass the government in public. If you're in it, mm -hmm. like for example, you and myself, mm -hmm. we have an intimate relationship with almost everyone in government. Mm -hmm. I don't need to put it on social media. Mm -hmm. I could simply go, have, make a phone call or I could send an email. Mm -hmm. And that's what other persons in the party need to, be, to know. Mm -hmm. You have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. You can't go, uh, I don't want to say airing your dirty laundry in public, but there are avenues and mechanisms within the party to have address right. those, mm -hmm. very, those very grievances that you have. Mm -hmm. So I don't subscribe to the view of uh, using social media or using any other medium mm -hmm. uh, to, to criticize or embarrass the government. Mm -hmm. There are the people who do a good job of that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I do advocate the young members who come into the party, you, do you have problems with the party, or whatever I issues you have with the party, take it up on a, on a, on a, a level within the party structure. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, and, um, use social media to promote. What uh -huh. would you say to some uh, young members, and this is about new members, because you are on a new yeah. drive, who would say to you, well, taking, up, taking it up internally, may not come across well because and this this is not necessarily about the part your partnership that I belong to but there are people there are young people who would say to you when you try to speak to a senior or a senior adults it comes down to you know you just sit down you, you, your concerns are brushed aside how do you tell a young person who's going to come and tell you that which I know for a fact it, it, is, it is a fact how do they deal with that that's a very good question that's a very good question <laughs> I think if a party is not responsive mm -hmm. internally to the to the cries and pleas of its, its members, mm -hmm. then that's not a fit party. Mm -hmm. I think the minute that you find yourself in a situation whereby you're not being listened to in your own party, mm -hmm. no one is giving you just you. I would say, leave that party, you tell people why you're leaving that party. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be a, a member of a party mm -hmm. that is not responsive to the needs of its members. Mm -hmm. The day that I find that the internal process of the, the party does not work for me, mm -hmm. and does not work for John Jones or any other member, then I would resign the party. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely resign that party. Because if you can't uh, treat your own members with that sense of dignity, uh, how will you treat the members of, of the, 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 the Guyanese people in, in, in general mm -hmm. uh, who come to you? and to have their needs addressed. Exactly. All right, now with just about five minutes left, um, there is another issue I'd like you to address within the short time that we have left. What does James Bond at this point in time, especially to young members who yeah. are coming into your rebrand, rebuild drive, 
what do you say to those members and uh, even the young boys and girls at Tiger Bay who would come to you and say man how can we see more young people in the top brass and this has nothing to do with any of us internally your work externally what do you say to those young people who come to you and say we should have seen more uh, I've addressed this on numerous occasions mm -hmm. you know and it's, it's still being asked and I say this here, and I want to look forward my life. I may not answer your question directly, mm -hmm. but I want to answer it in this way. You have to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare yourself. I think as a young person, you have time on your side. You have energy on your side. Uh, you have vision on your side. I think uh, Guyanese tend to have a, a wait your turn kind of uh, mentality mm. in terms of promotion in terms of uh, how they look at uh, in, in apprentices or trainees or wait your turn your turn gonna come that's a fact in Guyanese society um, I may not agree with it but I will say this to young people your only obstacle should be yourself now is the time to prepare to educate um, to train and to get yourself in a place where in a few years time mm. persons have no option no other choice mm. but to recognize you and if they and if the 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 persons you think that should be choosing you um silent and marginalize marginalize you they do it to their own detriment mm -hmm. and um, i think we as a party the pncr as a party need to understand you need to keep your best i think Guyana. So we, they, they mm -hmm. got the, uh, Dr. Rupert just said we have the highest migration of right. tertiary. So, uh -huh. You always have to find a way to keep your best and attract the best. When you start thinking like that in terms of politics, you'll be a different party. You'll be a different PNCR, you'll be a different PEP, a different WP, a different AFC, a different country to hold. That when you want to attract the best and keep the best. And most, um, most times we find that that aspect missing. And I believe that the turn wrong is coming. That's why I say Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. It's not for a presidential bid by James Anthony Bond. Mm -hmm. or it's simply to tell young people this, and I will say this now, is to gear yourself. Because I, I had a conversation, and I want to quote, but I won't say who told me these words. Mm -hmm. uh, in five years' time, a lot of people you see here will not be here. Fact. Mm -hmm. Fact. A, a lot of people you see here will not be here. And um, I saw that as a challenge when he told me that. I don't think he, he understand the impact it had on me. And um, I said, you know something, James? If they're not going to be here, are you going to be ready? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be the same James in 2015, uh, 2020? And I, I took it on as a personal challenge to ensure that I know how to manage certain things, and I know how to to interact and feel the needs of the of the Guyanese people. Um, there are so many things you have to learn in terms of building character. And though you may be a professional, though you may have your education, there are certain things that build character. character. And what I'm being, what I've been doing, uh, my son self is trying to build my own character um, in terms of a politician, keeping promises, um, not just campaigning. Every election, election. and um, every, I tell myself I, I will do as David Granger did, uh, President David Granger did. After he would have um, be, became the presidential candidate of the PNC and then APNU, he's never stopped working. He probably now stopped campaigning. He's never stopped campaigning. And I intend to follow that example. I've never stopped campaigning. Never stopped. Uh, because you can't just be five year politicians. Um, every five years you go to people for votes. Mm -hmm. um, Guy needs to reject that. Um, in, in a few in a few years, they said, "What are you doing here now?" Especially you have, now you have local government elections. They need to see your presence. presence yeah. They need to know that you're doing stuff every single day for the, for the for the benefit of Guyana. So, young people, I want to say this: Vision 2020. Ensure that you're ready. Ensure that you're prepared because of a lot of the people you see now will not be there. Thank you, James. Well said, and I don't think I can add anything to that. Um,
of course viewers we are just about out of time james i want to thank you very much for coming it, it was certainly a pleasure this is the first time i have i mean aside from our own uh personal one-on-one -on -one, this is the first time i've i've interviewed you for almost an entire hour on live <laughs> television and and the, the public um got a lot we know we will still hear that james is a rogue he's controversial <laughs> and all of that but we don't mind eh? <laughs> we don't mind because he has explained himself so james once again thank you very much for being a part of facing the nation today thank you for having me. All right, great to have had you, James Bond, attorney at law, former APNU member of parliament, and of course, he is currently the one of the person, the main persons behind the uh, rebrand, rebuild people's national congress reform project. That's a project whereby he's getting young persons involved and encouraging them to join the people's national congress reform because you heard it from him. It is uh, time for the youths to become more involved and, of course, take our party and uh, our partnership and, of course, now a coalition government and try to learn as much as we possibly can so that when it is indeed what they're saying, the youth's time, <laughs> it would not be a very difficult task. This has been another edition of Facing the Nation. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, this is the final Friday in June, is it? Yes, I'm yes. correct. The final Friday in June. I trust that you would have been able to accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish for the rest of this month. And I think James <laughs> has something else he wants to add. Go ahead, I, James. I must say um, tomorrow we'll uh -huh. be having a unity jam okay. up at um, Diamond Tarmac. Um, we are trying to do something that has never been done since um, Dr. Cherry Jagger and uh, Lena Forbes Samson were um, trying to do something where all the political parties come together, have some fun. So mm -hmm. we're red if you're PP, we're green if you're AP, well, and we're yellow mix. if you're AFC. We don't matter, we're not looking at politics, we're not looking at race anymore in Guyana. Unity Jam. Uh, we're all Guyanese, uh, we respect our political persuasion. So tomorrow, at Diamond Tarmac, uh, we're going to have Slingers Infusion, who haven't played in the same area in about four years. So we're bringing together Slingers Infusion as well. It's going to be Alabama, Chris Yates, Calvin Burnett. So tomorrow, East Bank residents, it's going to be Unity Jam. And I'll be there, of course. All right. For the persons, uh, for when I'll be rebroadcasting re it, of course, that would be <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> of course, <laughs> this program is actually being aired on Friday. And what we're going to do is send James our bill, because that was a free advertisement. <laughs> Viewers, thank you very much for joining. Tuning in. Tune in again next week. I am Malika Ramsey. Be good guy any citizens. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Bye-bye.